Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Ceph and how to use an SQLite database with an RBD pool in Ceph. I'm excited to tell you that I partnered up with Code Combat to bring your kid a learning opportunity. Back in my day, there were no one that could tutor me, I knew more than the teachers, and I had to put in the work because there were no other option. Unlock your child's coding potential with Code Combat's live online classes. The classes are led by experts who make learning an exciting and rewarding experience. With their help, your child will work through coding challenges and feel proud of their accomplishments. Personal attention and a structured curriculum will help your child become a confident coder. I always said that I hope that you learned something today and now your kid can. Follow the link in the description and enter the promo code EXPLORER10 at checkout for a 10% discount and all subscriptions have a 30 day money back guarantee. So that means that you can create a Ceph pool and then run a, a database on that Ceph pool and have unlimited storage pretty much because you can add more data drives or more OSDs to your Ceph in order to give you more data space and your database can just grow. So let's look into this. And here we have the Ceph one single um, a little Ceph cluster that I set up. This is just for testing so I can show you how to do this. So let's go in here and create a new pool. I will call it the test pool. I've done this before and it should be replicated. I have an auto scale. It should have a replicated size of more than one but I'm just using one here. Uh, I set it to an RBD pool and replicated rule is fine. No compression quotas and so on. So just create a pool. And, and when we do that, we will have somewhere where you can store this database. So it will take a little while for this pool to actually be created. There we have it. It's up and running. So if we switch over to my command line here, we can actually try to run this. First off, we need to set a few parameters. So I have set the Ceph configuration and put a configuration file here in my GitHub page and I, I have a configuration. It's a normal Ceph configuration that you usually use. I also need to set the actual key ring for the, uh, the uh, user I want to use. In this case, I use the admin key ring. You could set up a specific user for this and make it very specific for the use case that you want. The documentation is on uh, Ceph.com uh, so you can actually see what you can set up there. I didn't do that because this is just a proof of concept and you also need to set the admin. Now, after you've done that, you can go into SQLite and in here I can load the Ceph library for SQLite like this. And the problematic thing here is that the one that comes with Ubuntu is 17 to zero and sadly that has a bug in it. It has a really interesting regex bug where they didn't uh, add the extra slash slash before a dash, which means that they are handling through different values as ranges in the regex and it crashes when it's actually trying to read your path. So it doesn't work. So sadly, I had to go in and build my own library here from uh, the source code in order to run it on Ubuntu. Maybe the Debian, li uh, Debian libraries is better because the Debian libraries are using 16 to 10, I believe, and the bug is not available there. Uh, if you look into other operating systems, the SQLite library might be correct, but they had a bug for a while and it didn't work for me, so I had to build it on my own. Um, then after that, we can actually load this test pool. So here we have the, uh, I will open a file on the test pool. I will open the database.db so I can have multiple databases in this pool if I want. And then I want to use the VFS Ceph. And if I load that, it will load the test pool and create this database so I can create stuff in it. And if I now create a table here, uh, table of users. So create table users with an int primary key and a name. And if I then do tables, uh, if I can spell tables, I see that I have a user table. And if I then insert a user here and insert Dan Daniel Pearson. So after that I've done that insert, I can also select that data to see that I have it there. 
That is normal SQLite behavior and it could be stored anywhere, but it's stored on Ceph at the moment. What you can't do in SQLite normally is run a statement like this, select Ceph status. If I do that, I get the actual um, client ID logged in and my IP here and so on. If I do another thing here, we can do a select Ceph perf and we get some performance metrics from Ceph um, that we can see the actual client and so on, how it actually works. And those are things that are running against the Ceph cluster. Uh, if we switch over to my cluster here and look, we can see that we have stored 12 kilobytes in the pool already. Uh, so that worked. Uh, but running it in the client here is not that useful. So I want to do look into, can I use any programming language to just switch over and run this SQLite library? And I tried a bunch of them actually. So if we go over to my little notepad here, you can see that first off I tried PHP. And in PHP you can open something and you need to have something opened in order to load an extension. So I did that, load an extension, and then I tried to open the other one uh, database. If I tried to do this beforehand, it said that that is not available. And here it says that you can't open a database if it's already opened. Uh, so I actually went into the source code for PHP and removed this thing here that I can't op open an already database object. And then I get the same issue that I get if I just run it beforehand, that it doesn't really recognize the extension. So it didn't work well in PHP, sadly. Uh, then I, I switch over to JavaScript, try to do this, uh, load the database here and then load this. Same goes here. I haven't found any way to actually switch the database address over so I can load the extension and then open the actual uh, database URL. Didn't work at all in JS, sadly. Uh, I also tried Python and same goes here. You can't reconnect. Um, for some reason, you can't load an extension if you don't have a database and you can't switch uh, connect to the database afterwards. In this case, I just got the error that uh, the path was not correct. Last but not least, I tried my old true and uh, uh, tested Java. And we actually have something working here. So if we have uh, my Java code here, we have the SQLite config, we enable the extension so we can actually load extensions. And then I create a connection to memory and then I create a statement and I execute this select load extension uh, statement. And I don't know if this is a bug or if it's actual intended behavior, but that loaded extension is not cleared from memory if I open a new connection. So I open the second connection here against the database uh, URL and created a statement. And then I can run this statement to execute a query and get the second parameter here. And if I run that main here, I should get uh, out Daniel Pearson from the database. There we see, I have Daniel Pearson. I should also be able to run this uh, Ceph status uh, message here if I want. We we'll run that, I should get the same information that I did before. And I need to switch which column I actually look at. So there I get the same information. But if I go back here again, I can also add information, of course. Need, uh, you need to be sure that you can actually uh, add information to your database so it works in Java as well. So sadly, it doesn't work in the other languages. It works well in Java. Um, and I had to do a re <laughs> do compilation uh, handle. And I had to handle compilation issues with buggy earlier versions. Uh, but it actually works. It's something that you can use. I'm not really sure what the use case here is for having a database in the cloud. It could of course be something that you uh, want an ever growing database. That is a good use case for this. And you could have it distributed over many machines and you can do backups easily. 
but sadly this is for single client use only so you can't really uh, connect to this database and then have another client connecting to the same database because the database file is locked so that is an issue of course if you want to do have a distributed system with multiple web servers or something like that doesn't really work for that um, can you think of a good use case for this leave a comment in the comment section down below uh, this is what what i wanted to cover today i hope that you found it interesting i hope that you learned something today if you like this video give it a like share it with your friends and colleagues if you haven't subscribed yet please do that and i really hope to see you in the next video